What's going on everybody? This is Living in Arizona Now and today we're going to talk about the benefits of living in Arizona over other states. Let's do it. So a big benefit of being out in Arizona over other states is our diversity in weather. Obviously, in the wintertime, we get a lot of sunshine, especially in the valleys like Phoenix, Tucson, Yuma, and then some of the other areas on the outskirts of Arizona. We get great weather, but we also get cold weather. So I could be in Phoenix and drive two hours north, and I can be right in the thick of snow in Flagstaff or Prescott or even the White Mountains, and I can be skiing. So I can get beautiful weather down south, but two hours away, I can drive up into the beautiful snowy weather if I wanted that. Also, another thing, in the summertime, if I want to cool off and get out of the extremely hot areas of Phoenix or Tucson or Yuma or some of the other hot places, I just go north to those mountains where I can find, sometimes in these cases, 40 degree weather at night while it's 80 degrees at night in Phoenix. So it can cool down by 30 to 40 degrees just going up into those high mountains. For example, here it is in the winter time, sunny weather right here at 70 degrees here in Phoenix right now. If I wanted to cool off and possibly even get some snow, I can go two hours north to the White Mountains or to Flagstaff or Prescott and I'm gonna be in a lot cooler weather where it's gonna be potential for snow. If I wanted a sunny Christmas, I can be down in Phoenix or Tucson or Yuma in some of the hotter areas and have no snow whatsoever, maybe a little bit of rain, but guaranteed no snow. Now in the summertime, if I wanted to get cooler, if I wanted to cool down, I go two hours north into those mountains and I'll get much better weather. I could get 40 degree nights in the White Mountains when it's 80 degree nights here in Phoenix. So I can really cool off if I want to and that diversity in climate zones really makes Arizona nice. Along with diversity in weather, we also have diversity in wildlife. As you can see right here in the riparian in Phoenix, we have a diversity in birds. We have everything from the rail tail hawk. We have the Northern Harrier. They also will have cranes out here and owls. So a lot of birds in Arizona, but we also have a diversity in mammals. We have black bears. We don't have any grizzlies, but we have elk. We also have a diversity in our streams. We have trout, we have some bass, so you're gonna get all sorts of different uh, animals here and big cats also. We have mountain lions and then we have bobcats. They call them wildcats someplace else. We obviously have some coyotes, javelinas, which is a form of a pig. So lots of animals out here. And in terms of deer, elk, white-tailed deer, pronghorns, so many different deer species are living here in Arizona. No moose though. And on the subject of diversity, we have a diversity in parks. We have Saguaro National Park. We have Grand Canyon National Park, which are two totally different environments. Then we have Petrified Forest, which is another park. And we have national forests like Tonto National Forest. Then we have other parks in the southern part of Arizona, like Organ Pipe, which is a very unique cactus. So the more you go around Arizona, the more you'll realize we have a lot of park variety for you to explore, which keeps you outdoors and exploring, having the good life, right? As you can see, I'm standing next to the Honey Bee campsite. That leads me to my next point. Arizona allows you to have a very active lifestyle with recreation. If you go to the south, you're gonna have places like Patagonia Lake. You're gonna have that Arizona high country where you can go into Madera Canyon. As you go into central Arizona, you're gonna have desert. You can do off-roading. A lot of people out here like to get the off-road vehicles with ATVs, all-terrain vehicles also. So they'll tag along with that and they'll get together with friends and do the off-roading thing. And you can really get some good off-roading out here in Arizona that you can't get elsewhere. Not saying you can't get it elsewhere, but Arizona's got it great. We've got forests, we've got desert. Then as you go north, you can get a lot of outdoor activities at Sunset Crater. You can walk around these volcano type environments. You can hike to the top of a 12,000 foot mountain up on Mount Humphrey, San Francisco Peak. You can go to Mount Baldy where the White Mountains are and hike up there. And then you can go around Prescott National Forest and do all sorts of hiking out there, canoeing on the lakes. They have a lot of kayaking, stand up paddle boards on all those lakes like Lynx Lake and Watson Lake, so many different lakes in Arizona, reservoirs that you can hang out and do a lot of water sports. Even Roosevelt Lake, you can go to Apache Lake, Squirrel Lake, Canyon Lake, just going around. So much outdoor activities for you who love recreation. 
Another thing about Arizona that other states have that we don't really have is too much natural disasters. Aside from possible drought, which they say we're in a drought, and also wildfires, you're not going to really have to worry about earthquakes, tornadoes, although occasionally we get dust storms or we get a funnel cloud that will form, but it almost never really touches down anywhere of danger. But, you know, you got to kind of be aware of that. But we don't really have those intense hurricane uh, type winds that you get in other places. Every once in a while we get a micro burst with a monsoon, but overall your risk of natural disasters is very low. The only one that you got to kind of watch out for if you got a weak house is fire. If that ever happens, maybe a strong gust of wind, like a once in 50 year wind might come through. You better hope your roof is going to hold on to that. But for the most part, there's nothing that you got to really worry about. Maybe a little bit of flooding, but again, if you compare it to Texas or Florida, you're not going to see Arizona coming up on these national disaster lists like you would in Florida, California when they have an earthquake. So that's something that I think is a benefit here in Arizona. Not too much high risk national natural disasters. Another great thing about being in Arizona is we have modern infrastructure. We have the best freeway system in the country, in my opinion, with our roads being very modern. You don't have a lot of potholes. Now, don't get me wrong. We do have some areas that are going to have potholes, especially in the smaller towns that haven't had any repair. But for the most part, in the big cities, Tucson is up and coming. I would say it's a bit behind Phoenix, but still the state the interstate grid and getting around on highways is very modern. Also, the structures, the homes, it's a very new city. You're not going to have the problems you have in New York, Philly, Washington, D.C., or Boston with old infrastructure. Even in the north, uh, Chicago, Minneapolis, you're going to have problems with the older infrastructure over there. Phoenix, very new, modern, and that's a good thing. And they're building some new structures, new high-rises, all of that coming into the state. And let's talk about jobs compared to other states. Number one thing that comes to mind is in the wintertime, if I'm working from home, I don't wanna be in a place where it's snowed in for six to eight months working from home. Basically that's like not the life that I wanna live. So being out here in Arizona, you're still gonna get sunshine in the winter. Just check our golf tournament, the Waste Management Open, and you'll see it was all sunshine in January, like in the 70s. We get that in the wintertime all the way into late fall and we get it into early spring. So lots of sunshine in Arizona and that to me is a benefit, especially if you're working from home. And the reason I really highlight working from home the first is because a lot of people are now doing that. They're working from home, you know, you can work remote, live anywhere as long as you have an internet connection and a Zoom, you're able to dial in. But beyond that, let's talk about jobs that are here. There's a lot of aerospace jobs. So if you're into military or aerospace, we have Boeing, we have Lockheed, we also have some other contractors with the government here down in Tucson. So you're gonna get that at Luke Air Force Base also. But beyond that, we also have a new industry that's being built in the tech corridor. We have data centers we, out in Mesa. We have a few being built for Google and Facebook. I believe Apple's also building one. And then if you go out to the Northwest side, you also have semiconductor plants being built. So Taiwan Semi is building a plant out here and other semiconductors plants are being out here. And in the South by Coolidge, I believe it is. We're also building electric car companies. Now, those electric car companies, we'll see if they actually end up panning out. Nikola was out there, Lucid Motors also. But there is some tech jobs being uh, established here. We also have a big Intel center right down the road in Chandler. So jobs out here, they are abundant. If you don't want to work in tech, then you can work as a real estate agent. You can do construction. Those two things are always in demand. Even law enforcement also in demand. Keep that in mind. Now let's talk about how family friendly Arizona is and compared to other places and safety. I would say that safety and family friendly all go hand in hand. Now outside of a couple different places, which we can make a full video telling you exactly what places you should probably avoid or the areas to avoid, for the most part, Arizona is a safe place. Yeah, so aside from those specific areas that have higher crime, places like West Phoenix, around West Glendale, those areas, kind of Central Mesa or Central Phoenix, Outside of that, I really feel safe. I feel like you can feel safe for the most part living out here. I know people are gonna say, oh, there was one crime about two years ago that makes this place dangerous. Well, really in those smaller communities, you're gonna get maybe once in a blue moon, 
uh, bad event, you know, aside from driving, driving is always dangerous no matter where you are, so you wanna pay attention to that. But overall, I would say you can really feel safe here in Arizona, more so than even other places. Yes, they say we're close to the border, so some of that carries over from the cartels, but I would say, like I said, Aside from a select few different areas where it's concentrated, outside of that, you're not gonna have a lot of problems. I know people are in the comments gonna go, oh yeah, right, this is the most dangerous place. Yeah, because more than likely, they live in one of those dangerous communities that we can make a video about if you would like. Another thing that I really like about Arizona, now some states are gonna have this, but we have lots of sports teams here, uh, pro sports teams, I should say. We have the Arizona Coyotes hockey team, we have one of the largest golf events, which is the Waste Management Open PGA Tour. I think like 500,000 people attended it this year. We also have the Arizona Cardinals. Now I know some people are gonna be in the comments right now, kind of salty, you know, saying, oh, I would rather have, you know, the New England sports clubs or San Francisco sports clubs than having the Arizona sports clubs. But every once in a while we get lucky, we make it to the big dance. The Suns are really good this year, hopefully. Uh, but we have the Phoenix Suns basketball team, we have the Arizona Diamondbacks baseball team who have won a World Series. So we've got the pro teams, then we have some good college basketball teams like University of Arizona Wildcats down in Tucson. Uh, the basketball team is a good one there. So check out those guys in the Final Four maybe, Sweet 16 for the NCAA Final Championship. And then you have the Sun Devils, which to be honest, they don't really do too much, but it's mostly the pro sports that we have here that's really good. All right, now when it comes to the people, I would say we have friendly people here. I know we're gonna have people in the comments who are gonna say Arizona's got the most unfriendly people, but from my experience, we have a lot of very friendly people that come out here. Even snowbirds, when they come from other places, they're just so happy to be getting all that vitamin D and uh, sunshine that they are more happy than they would be in other places like Seattle or Vancouver or Canada or wherever they're from that's very cold. And they come down here, they're just in a generally happier spirit but the locals, especially in the small towns, very happy and friendly. If they don't like you, that might be something that you might want to consider about yourself working on. But for the most part, I would say people in Arizona are friendly. And like I said, if, they're, if you're not meshing with them or vibing with them, maybe make some adjustments. Because I would say, generally speaking, people in Arizona are very friendly. And I still stand by my statement that Arizona is still affordable place to live. I believe you can get a lot more bang for your buck. Sure, there's other places in the country you can get a lot of bang for your buck. Places like Pennsylvania or even Texas where you can get a big home or big acreage for more affordable than you can find in Phoenix or Tucson or some other parts of Arizona. But for the most part, I still think it's good value. I think you can get a big piece of land in some parts of Arizona for under $10,000. It's like $2,000 an acre, maybe even $1,000 an acre. You can still find that here in Arizona if you wanted to live off grid, out in places like St. John or uh, in the South. But also in Phoenix and Tucson, you can still find big homes. I mean, what I saw in San Diego for a million dollar home compared to what a million dollar home looks like in Phoenix, it's not even comparable. What you'd get in San Francisco when you look at a million dollar home versus a million dollar home here, it's like a small, like Victorian home it's maybe two bedrooms in San Francisco. Out here, a million dollars will get you a very huge five bedroom, six bedroom, two stories, sometimes three stories, with a big garage for a million bucks in places like Gilbert or Mesa or Goodyear or Surprise. So I think you can get a good bang for your buck out here in Arizona.